week ago there was a huge mess in the world. Why? A new announcement came out from the World Health Organization that the sweetener that's within Coke Zero is a potential carcinogen. It's a possible cancer risk. Immediately, tens and hundreds of headlines were published, TikTok videos from doctors, and everyone said only one thing. Aspartame causes cancer. And we suggest that you listen very carefully. Let's begin. What's up guys? See that? That's a small pack of sucralose, an artificial sweetener. Sucralose is about 600 times sweeter than table sugar. But that's not all. According to the FDA, if you weigh 60 kilos, you could theoretically consume up to 23 of these every day without any health risks. That's the acceptable daily intake, the ADI. But that's still not all. The ADI is determined after being divided by 100, meaning 100 times that amount is the level of use in which no side effects were observed among lab animals. But if you've ever even touched Coke Zero, Diet Pepsi, or even a sugar-free chewing gum like this one, pay attention. NBC News, 5 p.m. Millions of viewers sit in front of the TV and hear this. Some breaking news to get to out of the World Health Organization, which says aspartame is a possible cancer risk. Now, as soon as the news came out, everyone sitting at home looked like that. <laughs> Whoever, God forbid, happened to be sleeping and scroll the internet an hour later saw headlines like this. Stop consume. Aspartame is carcinogenic to humans. And there were also doctors on TikTok University who said that. Aspartame causes cancer. So aspartame absolutely does not cause cancer. <laughs> so what's all the fuss about? A week ago, the IARC has declared aspartame as a possible potential cause of cancer. Meaning, one, it's a potential cause, not a direct causation to all of that aspartame causes cancer as well as cancer obesity related cancer isn't true the IARC is divided into four categories carcinogenic probably carcinogenic possibly carcinogenic and not classifiable aspartame was classified into the third category as a possible cause of cancer and that's a huge difference. For example, in the carcinogenic list, we can find smoking alcoholic beverages and getting infected with Helicobacter pylori. But in the same list among aspartame, we can also find aloe vera, kimchi, working in a textile factory and a TV. The same place where you and your family saw those news. The possible cancer risk. Here, there's a big problem that the media will probably not tell you. The IARC identifies cancer hazard and not cancer risk. In other words, it means under some circumstance, even if unlike likely something bad can occur, it doesn't say what's the probability that the bad thing will occur. For example, at the same list as probably carcinogenic, we can also find getting infected with malaria, drinking a boiling drink and working night shifts. How much, how and why? Only God knows. That's why the headlines which scared millions of people and made aspartame carcinogenic are invalid. But here comes problem number two. Is it even possibly carcinogenic? The important part here is not the IR hierarchy, but rather are there even any studies that show that aspartame causes cancer? So if I had turned on the radio, I would have heard this Israeli doctor saying that. But do we? A document from the WHO expert committee that was published 40 years ago. Aspartame has not been found to cause cancer. National Cancer Institute, 20 years ago. A study with a sample size of almost 500,000 people. There was no association between the consumption of aspartame in diet drinks to cancer. 2013, the European Food Safety Authority. Experts ruled out a potential risk of aspartame as a carcinogen. And this year, a review of 12 studies on humans, 40 on animals, and 1300 plus possible mechanisms. Aspartame is unlikely to be carcinogenic to humans. But how many studies were presented on TikTok on such an important topic, and how many did Dr. Roseman present? Hint, it's less than one and rhymes with hero. Also, the World Health Organization again ignored its own meta-analysis, which found no association between diet drinks and any types of cancer. So, let's reply to the news anchor. One hand, they're labeling aspartame, which is in so much stuff, as a possible carcinogen. On the other hand, they're emphasizing over and over and over again that there's only limited evidence to support that it's actually connected to cancer. What are we supposed to take away from this? First of all, hey mom, I'm on TV. Second of all, good question. Proceed to the answer, shall we? According to the reports, the big man 
best comes from this study, which was published a year ago. The study came from France and showed an association between aspartame and a greater increased risk of cancer. Although <laughs> there is a little problem with the study, or should I say, a big one. One, it's an observational study, meaning you cannot conclude from it that aspartame causes cancer. They divided the people to non-sweetener consumers, low sweetener consumers, and high sweetener consumers, so the difference between the low and the high was 10 times greater. We expect to see that the low consumers will have this much risk for cancer, and the ones who consume 10 times more would have that much risk, right? That's not what happened. According to the adjusted models, the low consumers had a greater increased risk of cancer than those who consumed 10 times the amount. How? An observational study. There are plenty of biases. And you know what's funny? Or sad? Because of that study, whoever drinks regular coke will probably say, I told you the diet drinks are trash. But look at that on the same population the same 100,000 people from france there was another study in 2019 in that study they did find an association between sugary drinks and increased risk of cancer and even an association between 100 percent fruit juice to cancer however they did not find an association between diet drinks and cancer so not only is it very hard to generalize this specific study to the rest of the population it's even hard to generalize it to the same population and that's the problem with observational studies. If your diet was based on observational studies, you would be left with water at best and air at worst. But even if you include the results of this specific study to all of the evidence that we already have, there is no evidence that aspartame causes cancer. <laughs> and of course that the dose is the one that makes the poison. There is no evidence why we should not continue as usual. And this is why it's very very important to share this video. Super important. And of course, it is better to drink water. But if you want to drink something sweet and you have two options, sugary drink or non-sugary drink, option two would definitely be better. We worked on this video more than 50 hours, so all we ask you to is to smash that like button, click the notification bell and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.